Hello all my truth seekers, welcome to the truth show. In this video I will discuss the mysteries surrounding Aaliyah's death. Who hired that pilot? Why did Hype Williams change the location at the last minute? Was he trying to isolate Aaliyah? To find out this, we must follow the money. And who would have benefited from Aaliyah's death? Oh yes. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. To get answers, we need to go back and list individuals connected to Aaliyah and Hype Williams who changed the place for Aaliyah's last music video. And who wanted her dead, more than likely? And why? The list of suspects are DMX, Hype Williams, Jay-Z, Damon Dash, Barry Hankerson, and Lenny Kravitz. Now, to understand Aaliyah's death, we must go back, back to the surrounding events. Take a look at this. Now, before we go into that, listen to this. Okay, you all remember the video I did about Aaliyah, R. Kelly, and Jay-Z? The Truth Chapter Part 2. Well, in the video, I claimed that Jay-Z may have had an affair with Aaliyah, and that made Damon Dash jealous. So upon Aaliyah recording her video, Rock the Boat, which is about sex, like most of her songs, anyway, it was foretold that Aaliyah wanted to split some of the crew. But Damon was demanding a lot of her attention and begged her to come see him. So, she and some of her dancers and crew hopped on a plane and jetted out. But due to the plane alleged weight, and driver being drunk, it crashed and blew up. But that still remains a mystery. The driver being drunk may have been a cover-up. The weight of the plane may have also been a cover-up because it seems someone was putting out stories to cover up the last lie and or truth. Okay, now after speaking to some airline pilots and asking for their analysis, it seems that doesn't make sense. The maximum allowable weight gross weight is about 6,300 pounds. That's with passengers and luggage. And 4,038 pounds with empty weight, which leaves in between about 2,262 pounds. And the passengers allowed are 6 to 10. Now, in Leah's case, it was only 8 and they flew like this all the time. They all brought a bag or two. Most of the baggage got left behind with the set crew. So that whole theory about um, them put camera equipment and things of that nature was on the plane, that's completely false because we would have lost video and footage and things of that nature. And upon investigating the crash site, they didn't see any of the kind. Okay, so let's move on with that. And so, the problem with this time, with further investigation, it seems that the plane crashed about 200 feet away from the one ray, meaning the plane didn't reach enough height to have blown up the way it did. It was also foretold from the autopsy report that Aaliyah suffered a blow to the head and it sent her to shock. So upon the plane crashing, she was already knocked out. Hype Williams. It was leaked that Hype Williams was the one who changed the locations of the last video shoot at the last minute. Rumor has it he did it to lose Aaliyah's brother and mother from coming with her. But here's what's crazy. I'm not sure if Hype Williams is still best friends with Jay-Z since doing the Belly movie and after Aaliyah's death. Hype Williams wanted Jay-Z to play DMX in the movie Belly. Williams had a major role in Aaliyah's success. He did many promotions and videos for her. Oh, yes. Hype was also connected to Lisa Left Eye Lopez's death, which he was alleged with when Lisa traveled to Honduras, where she later died in a car accident. 
But it would help if you understood that at the time, Hype Williams and Damon Dash didn't get along. At the time, many people, including Jay-Z, didn't get along with Damon Dash. I mean, not to mention they were jealous of him for being the one Aaliyah wanted romantically. They weren't sexually involved. R. Kelly kind of ruined that for many men. Listen to what Dash said about this meeting after learning that Lenny Kravitz offered a jet to fly Aaliyah and the crew from Miami to Bahamas and that Hype accepted the plane. Here's what he said about this. Dash described flying to Miami to spend time with Aaliyah while she filmed video Rock the Boat. All down on green screen, by the way. From there, the crew would travel to Bahamas to continue the shoot, which Williams directed. Why, I have no idea. When she actually saw the plane, she said, I don't like this plane. I was like, well, don't get on it. She was like, well, I got to because I got work to do. We call it Dash. She got on a plane and she always had a very serious fear of planes in general. So she had to overcome a fear to get on that plane on the way there. Quick note, not sure if this was the same plane because it was reported that Damon was in Miami with Aaliyah, not the Bahamas. So how would he know about how she reacted? Not to mention she was asleep. So I'm assuming this is the plane Lenny offered. I guess Damon thinks it's the same plane. He went on to explain his point of contention with the famed director and former friend whom Dash had frequently collaborated with on music videos such as Jay-Z, Big Pimpin, and Hey Poppy. But what I was really more tight about, this is him saying, but what I was really more tight about was that I had heard that Lenny Kravitz had offered her a jet and that Hype had took the jet. So that's what really pissed me off about the situation when I heard about that. When asked if he had a, had an address the issue with Williams, Dash quickly replied, F yeah. However, when probed to elaborate on the conversation, he declined, saying, ask him, because of my respect for Aaliyah and her family. Everyone's respectful of her memory. No one really speaks on it because they want to save their butts. So in respect for her memory, just what he said, I don't say many things. His take on R. Kelly regarding Leah's highly publicized and controversial marriage to Kelly when she was just 15 years old, while Kelly was 27 years old, Dash said that they spoke about it lightly. He helped her to overcome the trauma allegedly. He said, and I quote, we talk about it up to the point that it hurts. And then she said, I don't want to talk about it no more. He recalled of the relationship between the two who collaborated on Leah's 1994 debut album, Age Ain't Nothing But a Number, which Kelly produced. In response to Kelly's federal trial for racketeering and sex trafficking charges, Dad said, I was just shocked at how long he got away with it. How many people turned and looked the other way? How many people were still, you know, involved with him in any kind of way, knowing all of those things? Key words. Many people were involved and they're not saying anything. Surprisingly, so is an R. Kelly. Out of sight, out of mind. As you read, Aaliyah took the same approach back then. But BS aside, I know this is weird and I don't condone it, so please don't put words in my mouth. But many people without animosity against R. Kelly said that R. Kelly and Aaliyah were really in love. She wore his ring even after they divorced. Of course, she said it was uh, given to her by someone else but it was their wedding ring that she wore yeah they were really in love he was crazy about her and she was crazy about him so when the public found out about them they separated i mean the sheer embarrassment from it made them go silent but she did miss him he made her famous first love huh weird but it is what it is they wanted Aaliyah to press charges but she didn't a secret love affair turned into a nightmare so in some circumstances age could be nothing but a number well not all ages but let me just say this my great-grandmother was 15 years old when she married my great-granddad who was in his 20s they say married till death did them part literally don't get me started on many overlooked romances from current times i'm not saying this justifies his actions but Leah was young hanging with people twice her age just saying Take a look at this. Just let's, let's just get the record straight. <laughs> Come there, go get me a white Jeep. <laughs> uh -oh. Well, no, we're not related at all. At all. No, we're not. We're just very close. He's my best friend. Yeah, cool. Now, who found her? 
in the whole wide world. Um, a lot of fun recording your album, but is there any song on the album that is your baby that you like more than others? At your best. At your best. Mm. At your best, you are love. And that's what we're going to peek at today, right? That's right. Uh -huh. Why that song? Because I love the Isley Brothers, mm. and uh, I really admire them. They're very unique. Their sound is very unique. You can tell the Isley Brothers song right off. And when he brought it to me, I just fell in love with it from the first time. So that's why I love it. Where did the title of the album come from? She's running around the studio one day with her friends. <laughs> talking a lot of smack. Talking about age ain't nothing but a number, girl. I'm like, what, 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 so what you trying to say? So immediately I heard the song, you know, and I said, I called her back 15 minutes later. I told her, check this out. So we cut the track right then and there. Oh, and for the yeah. record, you are how old? That's a secret. Uh -oh. Women doesn't disclose her face. <laughs> <laughs> you see, R. Kelly was at the point of confusion. So then we go to Demetrius Smith's book, R. Kelly's old assistant. He writes, and I quote, he said, upon first asking R. Kelly, was he messing around with her? He said, no. Until much later, he wrote this. I think she's pregnant, he said, in a voice that sounded as if he wanted to burst out in tears. Old Man Rob was all I could say at the time. Darrell McDavid arranged for a car to pick Aaliyah up at the old air airport and she had a hotel room available on arrival. This was crazy. How were we going to get through this without causing ill feelings with Barry Hankerson? But then I ran across this video of the closeness of the two. Now in this video he had bought her a puppy. They were smitten with each other. And they were clearly in love. Well, take a look at it. Me and Rob uh, made that dance up in the studio when I listened to all the other tracks. We were dancing just, you know, one of these type things, you know. And we just kind of went back and forth. We made up that dance. And uh, we started to use it in the video. And I hope people are doing it when they listen to it in the parties. You know, it's just they are. That. It was, it was, it was a good experience. It was fun. Watching them put songs together from scratch taught me a lot. So uh, hopefully I can do a little producing on the next album in collaboration with him, of course. So he's been a great influence on me. He is so into music and so inspiring that all I got to do is tell others to stand and groove and just sing some notes, you know what I'm saying? So after that, that's enough for me to write from. Oh, y'all want to see my photo? This is Tor. I can't hold it too close to me. But this is my little puppy. Well, I bought him from yesterday. Say hi. Hi. He's only three months old. Such a At your best. I fell in love with that song the first time I heard it. The Rob brought it to me. And that's when we decided to do it because we both like this. All of this aside and with this weird and questionable romance in mind, we can get why R. Kelly may have ruined Aaliyah for many men. This brings me to the next suspect. Yes, DMX. From what many people said about him, DMX was a very big hearted and honest man who cared about Aaliyah as a friend and a sister to whom he could talk to. He may even had a little crush on her, had many men wanted her, but at the time only one person had her, R. Kelly, and later Damon Dash had her romantically, but not physically, which was frustrating from what I hear on the streets for him. Here's what he said in the interview about Aaliyah, DMX. Six, we are celebrating the life and legacy of Aaliyah, and right now we are being joined by an artist that was very close to Aaliyah. Give it up for DMX. We have DMX. Dog man, what's up? I'm chilling, baby. What's going on, man? I'm good, man. So happy to have you on the show. First of all, how are you doing? What's going on with you? I'm doing good, man. I'm in the studio every day, you know what I'm saying? Banging out this album, you know, just, just getting the music ready, man, because I know the fans is waiting. Play, been a fan of yours for quite some time. I haven't had you on the show. As soon as you have the album, please come by and join us, bro. Got you. Got oh, you. All right. So, look, today is all about Aaliyah. We've been celebrating her life and legacy. What's your greatest or fondest memory of Aaliyah? Um, the fondest memory. I would have to say that um, it was one of the award shows that, um, you know, in L.A. that, um, you know, uh, we went to together. Me, her, and her brother, actually. You know, and um, up until then... I had never went to an award show with anyone but my wife, you know, but, um, you know, I rented the, uh, convertible Rolls Royce, 
Yo, know, I just made the movie, you know what I'm saying? And um, we went, we had a good time, man. We had a good time, you know? What was Aaliyah like as a person? Oh, man, um, an angel. You know, she, she was beautiful on the outside as well as the inside, you know? Very talented, but like I said, very, very humble. You know what I'm saying? Just a beautiful, genuine person, man. If you could get her back to say one last thing to her, what would you have said to her? I have to say thank you. Thank you for the opportunities, you know, and um, thank you for the music, you know, and, and thank you for just being you. Now, now before you go, you have a special tribute uh, to Aaliyah that you wanted to share yes. with the world. Yes, I do. Um, this is my own personal special tribute to Aaliyah. Here we go. Here we go. All right, this is, um, this is Aaliyah, you know, and, um, you know, it's my newest baby, and I named her after Aaliyah, you know, because, um, that's how special she was to me, you know, so, Aaliyah, hi, <laughs> you know, and know that you're named after an angel, yep. I actually really appreciate you. Very special moment, man. Thank you so much, and we hope to have you here in New York at 106 Park with us shortly. Yeah, you know I'm coming through real soon, baby, Ike. <laughs> it's the dog. Love it, man. Thank you so Yo. much. I'll give it up one more time for DMX. All right. What can we deduce from this? Well, that DMX didn't have anything to do with her death. Heck, he was featured in her I Miss You tribute video. I'm not saying that's an excuse, but just saying. I say that because you have to follow the money. And who has not said two words about Aaliyah and whose career has not faltered but yet gained? Oh, yes. This brings us to Jay-Z, who oddly hasn't said a word about Aaliyah since her death. But at the time, it was reported by many people that he wanted Aaliyah badly. He used to send her roses and ensured he showed up at any event Aaliyah was at. Heck, it was even reported by Damon Dash and many others this. Before Jay-Z lucked up with his future wife, Beyonce knows, he had a crush on another singer, Aaliyah, who was dating Damon Dash at the time. Dash, who co-founded Rockefeller Records with Jay-Z, says his former business partner tried very hard to get with Aaliyah, but she wasn't impressed with him. This the many times. Jay-Z was the odd man in this photograph you see here, dated July 2nd, 2000. Oh yeah, uh-huh. I'm reading, I'm reading this from left to right. Nathan Adcock, and that's Damon Dash, Aaliyah, Jay-Z, Sean Puff Daddy, who was Sean Puff Daddy Combs at the time, and of course, you know, Jennifer Lopez, party together at Combs' 4th of July party in Hampton, so yes. Dash claims Jay-Z tried his best to woo Aaliyah away from him. He said Jay-Z went hard in, at Aaliyah, but she, you know, curved slash dissed him repeatedly. Even though she was dating Dash, Jay-Z couldn't keep his paws off Aaliyah. He wanted her so bad. In this photo dated May 6, 2000, Jay-Z is hugged up on Aaliyah at, at a Tommy Hilfiger party in Los Angeles. Also pictured are Bajol Phillips, may I mispronounced that, read from second for right, and then second for right, you have Quincy Jones' daughter, Kedada Jones, who dated rapper L. Kujay from 1992 to 1994. So, could we say that this infatuation turned into obsession and then turned into deadly revenge? But did he have help? I mean, think about it. We have never seen him hug Beyonce with lustful and loving eyes, ever. Come on, my uh, people, even my beehive people, be real. Because Beyonce would have posted this on the internet and let everyone see it. She loves bragging about their love. So don't think she would have hit that because she would not have hidden that. It is always seen and forced and rehearsed, it seems. Men went after Leah because she was beautiful, intelligent, sexy, and gangster all the time. They could talk to her. You know, it was just peace. She was their peace. She was the type of chick you can take anywhere. A status that Beyonce <laughs> tries to mimic but can't quite match. Heck, I think Jay may be still be in love with Aaliyah. Is this why you never see Beyonce sport her natural hair color for long? Despite her looking very beautiful in her natural hair color, she may look too much like Aaliyah. Again, if he allegedly took vengeance on Aaliyah with this notion of if I can't have her, no one will, and then formed a hit list again 
who helped him. Her and rumored to be behind the kidnapping of their son, Shanga Ali Hankerson, during their custody battle at the time. Yes, this is the one she was in legal action with over the chain of chicken and waffle joints, her son. Yeah, that was their son together. And get this, he recently tried to blackmail her. Oh yes, their son tried to blackmail Gladys Knight. It's all over TMZ, just Google it. With all of the latest revelations about our Kelly and Hankerson's knees, we wonder where Barry Hankerson, where has he been? Is he hiding from the media scrutiny from his role in Elias and R. Kelly's, you know, lives? Or is he just living a retired, chill life now at the age of 71 years old? As a truth seeker revealed, after a little digging, we discover shocking information and allegations about the brother, by the way, of colossal size lawsuit that his young ex-girlfriend won. Here's the story. Now, this is back in 2007, okay? And this then 27-year-old girl called Kaim Dang filed a lawsuit against Barry Hankerson that listed all sorts of crazy and dangerously strange harassment claims that took petty on Hankerson part to a new level, cost him significant amount of money. This alleged lawsuit that Hankerson tried to, listen to this, this is crazy. Hankerson tried to blow up her car. This is what was said. It was set on fire, totaled, and charred the heck up. Sounds familiar? Mm -hmm. She stated. But it gets worse. Allegedly, after their breakup, Hankerson went online and spread false HIV rumors about her to defame her character. Complex reported that evidence presented at trial showed the source of the HIV rumors was an IP address connected to Hankerson. Oh, I'm not done yet. During the trial, Hankerson business records prove that after their breakup, he paid $400,000 to buy the Frank Greco salon where this dang girl worked so he could allegedly fire her, which he did. Oh, I'm still not done yet. Hankerson refused to settle. Therefore, the jury decided to award this girl $5.8 million in damages. Now, he wasn't proven guilty of torching her car. They couldn't prove that, but he did. But he was guilty of the HIV rumors and the wrongful termination. See how low he can get and how mischievous he can get. But then Hankerson X had to sue him again because she hadn't received any of those funds. Oh, there's also been threats in her life since then. I'm not sure of her status, but I pray that she's still safe. Now, with all of this information, what can we say about Barry? Well, word on the street, Barry knew, and Aaliyah's mother knew about her Kelly. But Aaliyah was making money, so they let her do what she wanted. Aaliyah made she rest in peace. I believe she knew exactly what she was doing. She was doing what she had to to make money and stay connected. I can't blame her. When you driven like that and you want that spotlight, you want that fame, you pretty much would do anything. So when it got out that Aaliyah was cutting Barry off and leaving the record label and anyone affiliated with R. Kelly, Barry, and whoever, that didn't go over so well. Not to mention she wasn't giving anyone no loving since R. Kelly. Just love flirt here, hug here, and that's about it. Now for Pimp Barry, no one leaves Barry. The man doesn't like rejection, hence his history. So before her death, please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. But later refused, and no one knows why. Lenny also didn't show up at the funeral either, because it was told that Damon didn't like it, and out of respect, he didn't. And that may happen then. It makes you wonder what the actual status of Damon and Leah's relationship is. It was reported that Barry got paid $90 million in his settlements after Aaliyah's death for wrong for death. Something he took out four days before her death, not to mention he owns her entire catalog. However, Aaliyah's mother and brother control her estate, so Barry was in big trouble for leaking any of her material without their permission. Hence why you haven't heard too much of anything. It was also reported that Aaliyah's mother and her brother were paid and are still being paid big and were given an NDA to sign. This is why you don't hear anything from them. Oh, yes. 
Now, aside from that, Barry was so bitter after learning that Aaliyah was going to drop him. He didn't help pay for her funeral or pay to at least fly her and the others back to the U.S. Noah wanted to help her and singer Maxwell ended up paying for the funeral expenses. You remember me saying that Hype organized the shoot and opted out of Laney's offer to use his jet again to fly them back from the Bahamas? It was allegedly leaked that Hype was so adamant and careless that the plane wasn't a real jet that could hold many people. It was a measly cargo plane and the pilot was drunk and high on cocaine. <laughs> hold up, something puzzling me about that story. Why would a pilot on his last leg allegedly assume the info about this pilot was correct? Because that could have been falsely leaked to take the blame off the ones who were really involved. Why would he take a dream job to pilot for celebs drunk and high and why did anyone else notice that he was high because his evidentiary he was lucid enough to see the number of people and baggage that were getting on the plane and tried to warn them people reported that but he was pressured and he just took a gamble this tells me that he wasn't high or drunk or anything the news is saying about him that it could be possible they leaked those false accusations again to take the blame off who was really involved I mean, why would someone who, again, could be a pilot for celebrities, or for that matter, to renew his name, take a suicide mission? It doesn't make any sense to me. That story never made sense to me. Oh, I'm not done yet. Before them getting on the plane, Aaliyah was complaining about not feeling well, as if someone drugged her. Oh, and get this, someone later did give her a pill for the pain, and she was in a deep sleep before loading the plane or was she already dead someone had to carry her onto that plane it gets worse she was still sleeping when the plane crashed and blew up because her body was found 20 meters from the plane still strapped to her seat slightly hunched over like she was you know leaning against the window Aaliyah probably felt nothing if she was still alive but my question is how did a plane blow up so badly and quickly after barely taking off it looked like a bomb blew up seconds after taking off just saying it seems that this was premeditated and hype helped orchestrate Aaliyah's death with Jay-Z and Barry Hankerson. I feel like he was trying to get her along and isolated. He may have been the one who slipped her that pill and may have intended to get her alone on the plane that was already rigged to blow up. But her dancers and others compromised that. I mean, now I'd be talking about multiple murder and homicide. After her death, Hype Williams and Jay-Z already had a significant connections to the drug world and were best friends. All had major come up after her death, along with Barry and his vast settlement. I don't think Damon Dash or Lenny Kravitz had anything to do with her death, although I'm still questioning about Damon Dash. So I stand corrected about Damon Dash for now. Like many, I think Lenny was only trying to get a Lilia, and it was reported that Aaliyah was dropping Barry as her manager. Hype, along with Jay-Z, was infatuated with Aaliyah, and they didn't like Damon whom they later broke away from. Hype went on to continue to do videos with many other famous celebrities, artists, whatever. Jay-Z quickly snatched up innocent and naive at the time Beyonce to hide behind and clean his image. As you can see, it worked. People seem to have forgotten about his shady and bloody past. They see him as this proper businessman who has gained much power since marrying Beyonce. But we can all agree with suspiciously never hearing Hype and Jay-Z talk about Aaliyah. You have also never seen Jay-Z look at or hold Beyonce as he did with Aaliyah. You always see Beyonce coming at him most of the times. She deserves so much better. Hell, some of the time he even covers his face like he's ashamed and this is all business. So I'm quoting Tia Mori. Letting go can be painful, but it won't hurt as much as holding on to an illusion. Oh, yes. I pray justice is served and everyone involved pays for what they did. Well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below. On that note, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And hit the bell to get notifications for when I do post more videos. See you all later. Bye.